Oh, I was drinking and gambling from 16, then I had a year on cocaine, which brought me to my knees. You know, I ended up in crack houses, I smoked crack, but I did smoke cigarettes. I thought cigarettes were bad for you. Oh, Paul Merton has pulled a rabbit out of the hat. Particular high moments in your career? Playing in the World Cup. I won the FA Cup, I won the League Cup, you know, I won the Premier League. Any regrets looking back at your career? Okay. Well, I could have been a good manager. My addictions were rife at the time. I was drinking and gambling and, and should have got the sack. It's the worst addiction in the world. It's so silent, but you leave an angry grenade behind you. Okay. You ruin people's lives, you hurt people that you love. What do you think of when we've had some high profile cases like Ivan Tony, for example? I think disgusting what they've done. It's an illness. It's one way, and that's lose everything. You've lost over seven million pounds. Okay. Not the money. You look back now, you lost time. I have nothing. I live in a rented house. I have to work. Been a millionaire two or three times over yeah. and wanted to kill myself in them times. Right. So the richest people in the world are the people living the moment. Mm. This is a deep dive into the rise and fall of a gifted footballer who suffers from chronic addictions. But before we get into this, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I grew up like, you know, most English boys desperate to be a professional footballer. And I remember a moment, I was about 13, 14, where I realised I'm not going to be good enough. Obviously, you were good enough. Do you remember a moment, the opposite, where you thought, you know what, I'm going to be good enough to, to make it here. I'm going to be able to be a pro. Not really. You not just, really. You just always felt like you were going to be going through <coughs> the system. No, no, never. No? Okay. Oh, yeah. No, I was, wasn't one. I was, I was very, uh, very nervous kid when I was growing up. Right. So I always had to come off the football pitch for palpitations, which nowadays anxiety. Right, yeah. So went to the doctors with my mum my, my and the doctor just said, stop playing football. Wow. But I learned to be able to cope with that in the end, whether it be in the back of the coach or a brown paper bag. Wow. You know, and then as the games went on, and I got more, more used to it. I'd, I'd become to control my, get, my, my uh, breathing. So yeah, I wasn't one of them. Even when I was playing at England later on in my career, I always used to think I shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I struggled with that. Yeah, I wasn't one of them. I'm still one of them lads now. I'm not, you know, I could be in a room and, you know, I walk in and I'm not one of them. I'm here, one kind of lads. And, but, and then I'd be sitting there, I stand in a room and someone else would walk in who played and they'd be bowling in and they'd be like, ah, and I think, you were shit. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But yeah, they yeah. have that confidence about and fair play to them. I, I'm just not that kind of person. No, I was very small at the time. You know, I, I, had, a, I had a good brain, mm. but good brain ain't eye candy. Okay, yeah. You know, eye candy is a lot different. You know, people dribbling past people and doing skills. I, I didn't have that. You know, in the end, I did probably have one of the best skills you could ever have in football, and that's passing to your teammate. Mm. And I see things on the football pitch. Do you think that'd be appreciated more now than when you were playing? Yeah. Yeah, people say, could I play now? I could play now because I, I yeah. had a good brain and I passed the ball. Mm. You know, so yeah, I've, you know, I, I would have been out of play and you just don't get kicked from pillar to post now. Mm. You know, then in them yeah. days, you know, Stuart Pearce, who was the hardest player I ever played against, but he was the fairest, but okay. the hardest. But he, he'd get the ball, get you, pick you up and say, sorry, but I'm going to do it again in a minute. And you're like, the ref's going, four more of them, sure, and you'll get a yellow. And you're like, really? Four more? Yeah, so it's different. But yeah, I wasn't one of them kids who, you know, was a sensation. Okay. And um, particular high moments in your career? Are there things that really stand out? You think, oh, I'm really glad I experienced oh, that. Oh, playing in the World Cup Yeah, for England. I mean, growing up, you know, growing up eight, 82, you know, watching the World Cup. Well, 78, Argentina, Mario Campes, and then, you know, 82 and, and the, the, the Maradona World Cups. Mm. You get the World Cup, you know, 86. To play in the World Cup's the ultimate. Mm. You know, 82, you know, Jerry Armstrong, Northern Ireland, you know what I mean, in Spain, you know, them kind of, them moments. And then to literally go and play in the World Cup was, yeah, something you can always... Not many people in a conversation that can say, yeah, I played in the World Cup. There's a lot of people who say, oh, yeah, I won the FA Cup. I won the League Cup. You know, I won the Premier League. Or it was the old Division One at mm. that time. They just changed the name. It's the same league. But not many, not many people can bring to the table they played in the World Cup. So, yeah, I would definitely say World Cup. And then sort of when it comes to the end of your career and it's time to, to hang up the boots, what was that like? Was that difficult? Did you feel ready? Uh... Yeah, I was shit. 
So it's, it's easy, really. It's not that hard. Okay. Yeah, I'm at Walsall. You know, people in people in the other teams are marking me out the game where three, three, four years ago, even even one or two years ago, wouldn't wouldn't have got near me. So you have your, you know, the refs running past you, you know, <laughs> and things like that. So I knew, yeah. Yeah, I have, I have my time. I mean... Do you think you should have given that? Do you think you should have retired earlier? I love football. Right. No, I love football. I'm addicted okay. to football. I think if I was in... If I was a, a good team, I could have still played, but I was only as good as... And that's... I'm not saying the players at Walsall weren't good players, but I wasn't good enough. Okay. So I needed to be around top, top players. Like, mm. I, I'll give you, for instance, Ryan Giggs played till he was 40 mm. at Man United. He played around top draw players. Mm. You know, one of the best players I've seen is Teddy Sheridan. Mm. Phenomenal player. Phenomenal player. He went to Colchester and was finished in six months. Right. If he'd have stayed at Man United or somewhere like that, he, would, he could have played till whenever, you know. Yeah. You know, because he's he had that brain, you know, like Ryan Giggs did. So I, I was I wasn't good enough, but I needed to play around better, better players. So yeah, it was you know, but and then I should have brought the better ones out at Walsall. So it was a catch twenty two. But yeah, no, I had my time. I played. I, played, I think I played seven hundred times and won. The only thing I didn't win in the game was 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 the European Cup, which it was called in them days. Mm. And we only got one chance at it. Mm. Any regrets looking back at your career? Management. Okay. I thought I could have been a good manager. I love yeah. football. As I say, I'm addicted to football. I thought I'd be a good manager from the age of about twenty eight. I always wanted to be a football manager and. I got an unbelievable opportunity at Walsall. Great little club, well run. And I worked under a lot of top managers in the game and my addictions were rife at the time. I was drinking and gambling and it just wasn't the right time. And I failed miserably in the end, in my opinion, and should have got the sack a lot sooner than what I did. I thought I thought the chairman at the time was, was very kind. Okay. But yeah. But I started my manager career with a 5-0 loss at Norwich. <laughs> I started and I ended it with a 5 0 loss at Brentford. So okay. there's good ways, you know, you even it out, you know, you want to go out on an even kill. You mentioned your addictions, and that's, that's something I really wanted to, to speak to you about. You've been very open about that. Was it difficult to, was that a conscious decision you made? You're like, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start talking about this. Was that difficult? No, no. As soon as I found out that I was an ill person who needed to get okay. well and I wasn't a bad person who was always searching to be a good person. I had to, yeah, be open and and make sure people understood that. There's, there's a lot of people out there now who, who are struggling with addiction, mm -hmm. you know, mental health, you know, and people need to know that they've got an illness, they're, mm -hmm. they're ill and they need to get well. They're not bad people who are always searching to get good and, and then you fail miserably again and then you beat yourself up, your self-esteem goes, you let people down, you start to hate yourself. So what's the best thing I can do to get out the way I feel? You know what I do. I have a drink or I have a bet or I or take a drug. Mm. And it's just a cycle. Just you just like a it's like a broken record with the needle stuck on the on the broken record. It's just going round and round. And you know, that's why I stayed open. It's like to get people to really understand you're an ill person, you need to get well. Okay. You know, if you went to the doctors tomorrow and the doctor said you had a nut allergy, you wouldn't go out and buy a packet of nuts. No. And that's the thing with addiction. You know, some people who, are comp who have got an illness can't drink and they can't gamble normally. Some people, a lot of people can, a lot of people can, but there's a lot of people that can't as well and they need to understand that, you know, they're different to other people and they're ill and they need to seek help. And that's why I always stay open. How long were you in that <coughs> mode for where you just thought you were a bad person? 20 20 years 20 more than years. that probably all probably all my all my career really and and more from 16 from 16 i would say so i was drinking and gambling from 16 and i had a year on cocaine which brought me to my knees you think going out you know i would go out and i would say i'll be home at a certain time and i put my hand on my heart and, and honestly believe i was going home right and soon as the night went on and i had that first drink and the saying is one drink's too many and a hundred's not enough I could never right. ever tell you when I was going home. Mm. And then, you know, that losing all your money all the time, hurting people, hurting the ones who love you, you know, and hurting yourself. And that's when you start to hate yourself. 
you know, you're thinking you're a bad person, you're not a nice person, and then you you, you sort of stop and you, you do well again and you're a nice person and, you know, because you're not picking up that first drink. Because if you don't pick up that first drink or have that first bet or that first drug, you're not going to get drunk or you're not going to yeah. get high or you're not going to get compulsive with the gambling. So you become a good person again. And then all of a sudden you go, you know what, I have a drink or I have a bet. Then you go into that addiction. You start hurting people again. You come out, I hate myself. That's where that's where I stay open now and just say to people, you're an ill person who needs to get well, not a bad person trying to get good. You're not. You're a good person who just needs to get well. So when someone's addicted to gambling, what, what part of it are you addicted to? Are you trying to win back money that you've lost or is it that feeling when the bet goes on the free that the bet goes on it's right. that that buzz it's the buzz of the bet it's the excitement then as soon as that bet finishes a compulsive gambler will be looking for the next bet no matter what where, the, what Why it doesn't it doesn't yeah. matter what happens you know if they've got money to have the next bet if they haven't got the money you know it gets into with me it got into such a <coughs> situ, into situations of i couldn't stop gambling that it could go on for days and days and it, you couldn't sleep, you can't concentrate, you're never in the moment because all you think is looking at your phone and it gets to a stage where you lose, when it's all gone, after a certain amount of time, you go, oh, I ain't got to do that again today. When you've run out yeah, of Yeah, it's weird. But you don't get that feeling when you're winning so much money, you think, just take the money. Right. You don't take the money. You don't take it. You know, compulsive gamblers want to just keep on gambling. You know... I could be like, say, £10,000 up mm. and have a £3,000 bet and the £3,000 bet loses. Now, a normal gambler would go, well, I'm, I'm winning £7,000 now. Yeah. Compulsive gambler, well, I need to win that £3,000 back. Right, okay. And that £3,000 could cost me £50,000 to get back. Right. You know, the, the rationale... You know, it's just constantly keep on putting a bet on. If I lose, I've got to win that back. And if I've got to win that back by winning more than just putting the money on. And it's, you know, there's, it, it, it's such a horrible disease and it wants you on your own. <coughs> you know, it's like, it doesn't want you around people. Okay. It wants you on your own. It wants you just, you know, I used to, I used to have arguments with my wife. So I'd, be, I'd have a load of money or I'd be winning and we used to have an apartment around, around the corner that we were trying to sell, <coughs> but we had to move to a house literally around the block because we had kids and we outgrown a one-bedroom apartment. Mm. But I'd get up on a Sunday and I'd ha I know I'd have loads of money and my wife would go and we'd argue and I'd start an argument. I'd go, oh, that's it, I'm off. I'd take the iPad, I'd go around the corner to the flat, I'd go and get my vodka or beer or whatever, and I'd sit in that apartment for four or five days, just punt, punt, punt. Four or five days? Days. Days. And you couldn't sleep. You couldn't sleep. Wow. Wouldn't eat, wouldn't eat. You know, just takes your life over at the highest level, like anything. It's, And then you'd lose it. You know, with drinking drinking and drugging, it's, it's a rugged down. It's a rugged down. Okay. It's like comes down slowly. And, you know, with gambling... I've never seen anything like it. You're up here, you're winning, everything's great. Whew, gone. Yeah. And li literally like that. And you're like, where's that gone? Wow. I wouldn't wish gambling on anybody. It's the worst addiction in the world. It's so silent. You know, how do you know I haven't lost £100,000 in the car since I come here? Yeah, yeah. Well, you can turn around and go, you ain't fucking got hundred grand, which you'd be <laughs> right. But, you know, how, how would you know? But I could leave here, I could have got a lift there, drunk six, seven, eight cans of lager on the way here, and both of you, when I left, would have gone, he's had a drink, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. More people commit suicide through gambling than anything. Right. You think, with gambling, it's silent, it's easy to hide. It's like, you go out for a drink, you come home, you go to your wife, oh yeah, I went out here, and you make up a lie. Mm. Within a month, you forgot that lie. Right. And they'll catch you out. Yeah. My wife will go then a month later. Oh, you was at Sounds though the other week, weren't you? No. Oh, you said you was. But with gambling, yeah. you're not drunk. You remember everything. So you become a good liar. Mm. The thing is with it as well is 
when you're losing, you get more and more in debt. And your addiction tells you not to go and see your wife or your partner, or your husband, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, because your addiction, they'll leave you. They'll leave you. Mm. And then, you you know, because you, you always think, well, if I go and say that I've lost all this money, the thing that you're going to say is, I'm leaving you. Now, so then you chase and chase. You lend more money, more money. Before you know it, you're so far in and people commit suicide. More mm. people commit suicide. Than, I wouldn't wish it on anybody. It's, really? it's such an... A compulsive, compulsive addiction. You know, you you can. How much can you put up your nose? How much yeah, can you drink? Yeah, you could lose a house. I've lost a house in America in in three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah, I never thought about it like that. I, I've had some alcoholism in my family, um, and like any addictions, like not fun, not just for the person, but for the the family well, around that, them. That, that's, that's but I never thing. thought about the. The angle with the gambling being that, of course, you could hide it so much easier. If someone's drunk, someone's drunk. And yeah. there's only so much you can drink in one day. 100%. Whereas you could you could lose every single penny you've got in a day if you want Easily. To. And lend more and more yeah. and more and yeah. just keep on lending. And the, the more you lose, the bigger your bets. You know, I never bought anything with my money. I never won a lorry load of money and I had the money there and I could pay every loan shark and, and everything's done. You mm. know, all this worry I had of paying loan sharks, make sure they weren't coming around my house meeting deadlines. And then I'd win and I think, oh, just take the money. You could pay everybody back. You've got a life at Riley. Or, you know, yeah. just a peaceful life, just yeah. peaceful. And 20 minutes later, I'm sitting there thinking, what have I done? Just I've powerless just lost over it. All. it. I've just lost it all again. Do you think it was worse because obviously you earned a lot more money? Yeah, than you, you, what you do, you <laughs> fast track it. Yeah, you know okay. what I mean? You, yeah. If you fast track, someone who's got less money, it might take steadily. The thing mm. I didn't have to do, I didn't have to steal. Do you right. know what I mean? I okay. didn't have to steal, thank God. You know, I, yeah. I borrowed, don't get me wrong, I borrow off people that had nowhere near as much money as me. Right. You know, you're ringing up, you, your dignity, your self-esteem just goes out the window. You're ringing mm. people up that, you know, you got more money than them and you're asking them to lend money, please, could you lend me some money? And that must be strange with the person on the other end of the phone thinking, yeah. hang on, surely you've got all the money in the world. And exactly. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And, that, and, that, and, and it's not good for you. You mm. know, in the addiction, you know, all you want is the money. Just want yeah. the money. Get the money, gamble it, gamble it. When you come out of it, I look back on my life now, I think, fucking sad. Mm. Sad. Sad. You know, how, how could I have done that? How could I have done that? But, I, you know, I ended up in crack houses and, you know, that's mm. where my addiction took me. And it does. It doesn't get better. No. Believe anybody listening to this podcast, addiction doesn't get better. Mm. Don't think, oh, you know, I, you know, I'm a lager man. You know, you know, I'll skip lager. Let's try wine. It doesn't get better. It owning, it's it's a steady. Uh, it, 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 the aggression gets worse and worse in the end. There's no doubt about that. You know, I've never known anybody come to a GA meeting, which is a gamblers and honest me meeting, and go couldn't stop winning, couldn't stop right. winning. You know, I'll give it a rest, give someone else a chance. It's one way, and that's yeah. lose everything. Everything. I'll get back to my conversation with Paul in a second. Before I do, if you're a business owner, marketer, entrepreneur, you're running ads online and you want significantly better results than what you're currently getting, my company can help you get just that. We create, manage, and optimize campaigns for our clients. If you're interested, there's a link in the video description below. You can click on that, go through to a page on our website, and book in a free call with one of my team members. Hopefully, we get a chance to work together. Do you think it affected your playing career? Would you have been a, a better player without your addiction? That is an odd question because I won everything, as I said, and played mm. 700 odd games, you know, so I stayed fit, you know, I was, uh, but when I did stop drinking and I went into treatment and I stopped gambling, I held the record for the most successful, most successive amount of games at Arsenal up until earlier this year when Saka beat it. Right. So... If you it, look, didn't, it didn't stop you showing up on a weekend. Yeah, and I, you know, don't get me wrong, I wasn't one of them who steamed into 50 50 tackles. Mm. That's not my job. Yeah. You know, my job was to make things happen on a football pitch. It was up to other people to do that. That was their jobs, what they were good at. So, you know, that's why I probably stay fit. But I was a functional alcoholic, functional compulsive gambler. You know, my dad learnt me one, my dad learnt me a lot of things. Don't worry, you know, football as well. If it weren't for my dad, I wouldn't have been a footballer. Mm. But he learnt me one thing turn up for work okay you know my dad my dad was a coleman 
you know, he had to get up at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I never woke up and my dad was laying in bed. You know, mm -hmm. he always got up for work. So that was one thing. But when you get older and the drinking got more and more when I finished playing, I look back now, drinking's a younger man's sport or a younger yeah. person's sport. Yeah. It's not it's not for my age anymore. So you said you ended up in crack houses. Do you think you're lucky to be here today? Oh, 100%. 100%. You know, and that's why sometimes, you, you, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm open and honest because I'm here for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, I am. I, you know, I'm yeah. you know, just sitting in crack houses, you know. I'm, I'm fortunate to play football. There was no phone cameras in them days. Yeah. You know, people were walking into crack houses. They're looking at it and double take and like... You knew they recognised you. Yeah, but it, it can't be you. Right, That okay. must be good gear. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And yeah, then, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> they go, you know, and, and places I've been, you know, and... You know, driving home one night in a car, fell asleep behind the wheel, no no, no seatbelt on, hit the wind the screen. You know, the ambulance comes and said, I, I just can't believe you're alive. Mm. It's impossible. But he mm. said you fell asleep because you fell asleep and you were so relaxed. Oh, okay. You've hit the, yeah. hit the wind the screen and come back. And I just cut all my head open. You know, if I was awake, I'd have gone straight yeah. through. So, you know, I know, I know I'm lucky and that, that's why I always stay honest now and, did it make me play better? Part of it did because my addictions, I was a free for all. I, you know, I lived my life off the pitch, like okay. not like it was my last day, but you know, I'm going to have fun. And, and I took that onto the pitch. I, I want to have fun. I don't want to be bored on the football pitch. Okay. You know, the players used to say to me, stop it in the glory ball all the time. Stop it in that. But uh, that's how I bet. And that's how I drunk. I drunk yeah. to the end and I gambled till my last penny. So I was always looking for that excitement. And that excitement was hitting that pass mm. or putting the ball through and fans going, oh, you know, wow, what's up? You know, that's the way I played. Do you worry about long-term health consequences from the, the drinking and the drugs and things like that? Uh, not re not now, I don't think so. I, I mean, I, I was just over five years sober the other day. So okay. it's funny how the body recovers, recovers yeah. quickly if you, if you do it. I don't like this dry January stuff. Okay. It scares me to death when people do this dry January. Interesting, why? Because I just think that their body gets used, gets turned over, and then it gets the first of February, and they go and smash it again. Mm. You know that's not good for the body, in my opinion. Okay. I think you you turn it over, it gets used to something else, and then you smash it again. You know you're better off if you're going to keep on drinking you, at a steady level. Just keep on drinking because you know I don't like it because then there's you know you just want to drink more when it gets to February. Right. You know, fair play to people, but I think if they carried it on and, you know, surely when they're getting up in January all through January, they're getting up in the morning, they're brighter, they're lighter, they're enjoying, you know. So, yeah, I'm not a great lover of dry January, if I'm being honest. Your addictions, do you think there's a genetic component? Were there people in your family <coughs> that had similar addictions? Yeah, my dad was a, was a gambler. No. Uh, he liked to drink. My dad's 15 years without a drink now. Okay. 15 years, which is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I don't... It's a hard one to say, do you get it from from then? Because my dad would never... You know, he didn't gamble the extent that I gambled. Right, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, you know, so I don't... I don't... I, you know, my brother gambles, but he doesn't like... It's controlled gambling. Okay. You know, he gambles what he can afford to lose. He yeah. don't go and see loan sharks or borrow money so there's you know that's why I've never ever said I always was in a fight to change the gambling thing of you know just looking into people's situation with the money so they don't get into trouble I'd never say ga be ban gambling forever right okay some people can bet normally yeah you know if you can it's fun you know because there are other countries as well that have much greater restrictions don't they particularly around like sports gambling yeah we we like. are now we are now i think there's a, there was a you know we was, i was involved in with a new paper where you know they've got to look at bank accounts now they've got to start looking right i don't like it i don't like the slogans when the fun stops stop you know okay. compulsive gamblers it's not fun right you just do it do right. you know what i mean it's like when you go to the pub if you're an alcoholic you yeah. go and have a drink you're not there to crack you know you start off like that and then the night just becomes into a drink so yeah i i'm not one of them people that say all i would say with gambling adverts in my opinion they're they're trying to get the compulsive gambler mm. when you're watching that you think that's who they're aiming for that's what they, well that's where their money is 
Right. Their money's with with the compulsive gambler. Okay. You know more. You know a lot of their money comes from that. But now because you know the rules, a lot of people can't <coughs> can't get bets on. But the worry then people go underground, and then that sometimes is worse. You know with drinking adverts, they're not looking for the alcoholic. Okay. The drinking adverts. You know if you watch yeah. them, they're not for the alcoholic. You know they're there for like people who can drink normally so yeah i have no qualms with that you know i understand now i surrendered i know i can't drink like mm. my wife drinks you know my wife have two glasses of wine and she'll stop and i'm is that hard for you to no, see her drink you no 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 i you know okay. i surrendered i know i can't i can't do it i that's plugged in now yeah but it's on a daily basis if i don't do the right things every day you know i'll be back i'm back gambling and drinking so i understand but yeah i don't mind people i'm not I don't like beer. I wouldn't be around drink every day of the week. Mm. <coughs> I have a saying, sit in an hairdresser's for a week. By the end of the week, you have an haircut. <laughs> right, yeah, it's the same yeah. around drink. Yeah, if yeah. you're going to sit around drink yeah. for a week, you know you're sitting around it for one reason and one reason to drink. Yeah. Yeah. There is... I don't drink. As I said, I had alcoholism in my family. And I find it strange, as someone who doesn't drink, how alcohol is just everywhere. And it's the thing that's used... For any scenario, you have a drink at a funeral, typically a very sad day. You have a drink at a wedding, typically a very happy day. Yeah. It's just always. Yeah, it's, so that, big, it's the norm, isn't it? It must be so difficult if you're addicted to it because it's just, I, I get pressure. <coughs> I, I don't drink. Everyone knows me, knows I don't drink. But there's still times where people go, oh, go on, just, you know, get involved. Yeah, I've gone past that where people would go to me. Yeah. I, okay. If I'm being honest, I don't go out. Right. If I'm being honest, I don't put myself in situations. I'll go for a meal. There's no need for me to sit in a pub. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. there's no, there's no need. Do you know what I mean? There was, it's like no, you know, there was no point telling Savala sitting in an hairdresser's, is it? Right. You're just wasting your day, mm. and it's the same with me sitting in a pub. Mm. There's wasting my time. You know, I don't need to be in a pub. I might pop in, and we might have a Sunday lunch in there. Yeah, but yeah. there's a reason. I wouldn't just yeah. go in for the sake of it. There's no point. Nothing in there for me. I'm not missing anything. You know, my life's a hundred times better today than what it was when I was sitting in there. A lot of addicts I've heard, one of yeah. the ways that they cope, well, they basically accept that they have an addictive personality and they need to become addicted to something that's positive as opposed to something that's negative like alcohol or gambling. Have you done that? Has that been helpful? My boy's football. Yeah. You know, I, I enjoy his football. I have, to, I have to be careful sometimes. I don't, you know, I have my time. Mm. I have my time. You know, there is days when... You know, I think, oh, Freddie, come on, you do better than that. He's okay. he just turned nine, you know. <laughs> but that's my addiction. That's not right. that's not him. That's yeah, me. That's yeah. not his addiction. So, you know, that was one of the things I have to really pull in, mm. you know. And I do now. I think I have now. I think I was a bit too, you know, oh, you've got to do well this week. got to do well. It's a long journey. It's a long yeah. journey. You know, I just let him go out and enjoy it and, and let him play. If he makes it, he makes it. If he don't. You know, that's just the way it is. You know, yeah. you've got to be fortunate. So, yeah, I'm, the, the problem, the thing is now, the good thing, I'm aware. Okay. I'm aware of my my actions, mm. which is something that I wasn't years ago. Mm. I wasn't. You know, I like a cigar. Okay. I like a cigar. I've never smoked fags. I don't, but I, I do like a cigar. Yeah. I smoke crack. Right. I smoked that, but I did smoke c cigarettes. I thought cigarettes were bad for you. Okay. But that's the madness of, of then when I was, what, 1994, 26, 25 years of age, that was the madness I was in, that I would think that crack was, that fags were worse. Going back <coughs> to that sort of time, did your teammates, do you think they knew? Some of them maybe? I, again, I pulled myself away. We used to, get, right. we had a Tuesday club. I stopped going to that. You know, I'd rather go out and sit in seedy places. Right. So, yeah, and in them days, you know, you, 1994, 93 wasn't rife. Okay. Wasn't like it is now. Yeah. Okay. It isn't like it. Honestly, it wasn't like it was then. It wasn't mm. like that. Okay. Um, I heard a, a, a figure associated with your gambling that you'd lost over £7 million. Mm. Is that true? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you know what? Not the money. Okay. Not the money. You look back now, you lost time. That's what lost bothers you time. more. Oh, we got, we got, we, you know, if you go work, you can earn money. You know, I've, yeah. I was, I've been a millionaire two or three times over. 
yeah. and wanted to kill myself in them times. Wow. So I, I know it, money won't make me happy, but mm. it will help. But when I look back, it's time. I don't get time back. Mm. You know, you're never in the moment. When you're gambling, you're never in the moment. You're, your head's always somewhere else. You're always okay. thinking, um, what am I going to do? What did I do yesterday? When am I going to get money? Or when am I going to do this? When am I going out for a drink? What did I do when I was out for a drink last night? What did we do? It was never in the moment and time. You know, my wife's got a picture of my boy sitting on a bench at school, looking down, looking for me at one of his plays because I choose to sit in a pub. Right, you okay. know them things. You don't get them back. Yeah. You can get the money. You can, I'm not going to get seven million pound back, but yeah. I surrendered that. I've I've let go of that, but I won't get the time back. And I think that's I've never lived in the time. People go, what was it like in '89 when you won the league? Oh, well, you must have been. I don't know. I don't know. I sit with Perry Groves, my best mate, wow. and he'll tell me because wow. my I was always never in the moment. You know, I I've come now that I've learned. The richest people in the world are the people that live in the moment. Mm. Don't matter how much money you got, if you're not living in the moment, you ain't got a penny. Mm. You haven't got a penny. You know, and another thing is I keep it in the day. I live in the day. Yeah. It's so important. I get up in the morning, I say, I will not drink, not gamble, or take a drug to today. Yeah. If someone said to me, don't do it ever again, that's overwhelming. I couldn't do that. Yeah. I couldn't do that. Okay. And then, you know, and if I can't do that, what's the first thing I'm going to do? Yeah, yeah. Have a drink, have a bet. So I keep it in the day. I've heard you say that the, the next time, and you're referring to gambling, um, will be dangerous. You're not sure you've got another recovery in you. Mm. What, what did you mean by that? <sighs> that I don't think I, I could come back again. So if you it's did hard. M make yeah. that mistake, yeah, or I, I don't know I'd, how I'd you phrase it. probably killing myself or something really? like that. Yeah. Wow. Because it... Because of the madness. Yeah. You know, you'd look back and you'll think, I know it's not good and I'm still doing it. Mm. So what way out is there? Okay. What way out is there? Do you know what I mean? I just don't see a way out if I've done it again. I just don't see a way out. Is that scary, especially as a, as a father? Yeah, well, it, keeps, it keeps me honest. It keeps me, you know, it, it, I need to keep on remembering where it took me. The drink and the gambling, it took yeah. me... Bad places, you know, I ain't got, I have, I have nothing. All I have is, you know, I say nothing, you know, I have recovery and I have a lovely wife and kids, but I have nothing. I live in a rented house. Right, Do you know okay. what I mean? I'm not a millionaire. I have to work. If yeah. Sky got rid of me tomorrow, I have to work. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, but at the end of the day, I'm as much happier today than what I was okay. when I was yeah. earning 35 grand a week. Yeah. Are there... And it, one of the things that I, I was thinking about literally driving over here today was in modern society, especially if you have a bit of money, you know, you're almost forced to gamble in terms of a financial advisor might advise putting money in the stock market or something like that. How do you cope with things along those lines? Like owning a pension is going to be investments. Could that almost trick <coughs> someone like yourself into gambling or you just have to be like, I can't do any of that. Anything goes in a bank account and that's it. My wife looks after our money. Right. I have okay. spending money. Okay. Yeah, you know, I'm 55, but I'm comfortable with that. Right. You know, I, I, I that's the way it is. Uh, pension, ain't got pension. Right, okay. My, the club, PFA, give me my money. Right. You know, I look, at the time, I would have kissed, I, I would have kissed their feet when they give me the, the money. Right. But when I look back now at 55 and I'm well, I think, what was you thinking? Mm. Why are you giving a compulsive gambler who'd been into treatment for gambling mm. his pension? Okay. You know, I, I... Could could they have not? Could they? Easily. Right, okay. Easily. Someone would have made money, that, you know, out of giving me that early. Okay. But at the time, you know, that was, a, you know, that, that was disappointing. You know, when right. you're not well, you know, you can... But yeah, I, I don't, I don't buy raffle tickets. If I go to a dinner, yeah. I'll give the £20, but I, I don't want the raffle tickets. Yeah, that's, okay. that's a trigger. Yeah, okay. Um, obviously with there being potentially a, a genetic element which I believe there is do you worry for your children you know would you if you ever saw them having a bet or something would you be like don't do that my oldest boy gambles he has a bet okay. but he bets what he can afford that's that's the way it is you know you get yeah. on with it you know my youngest one now long as I stay well I'm aware mm. you know he's seen me now he's he's seen what he's done to me really he has you know yeah, he's okay. seen 
he's seen the arguments, he's seen his mum being, you know, hurt, constant times of like the gambling, crying and, you know, and the drinking where I wouldn't come home. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't do that today. So there's no need for him to do it. If he does, and then I'm there, at least, you know, at least I've got the shirt and I've worn it and I can mm. tell him the story and, and tell him. But, you know, that's, it all depends how happy he is. Do you know what I mean? It's an inside job, this is. It's an inside job. You okay. know, you bet for a reason to get out the way you feel. Which sounds like it was anxiety for you. Yeah, anxiety. You know, I yeah. walked into a betting shop and I thought I was walking into a spaceship. It just took me out the way I felt. Yeah. Okay. And, and that, that was my go-to. If I got the ump, if I had an argument, you know, mm. I, you know, I, I, I do my recovery now for me, and I know that might sound selfish and not doing it for my wife and kids, but I have to do it for me. Yeah. Every other time I've done it for other people and it hasn't worked, I do it for me now, and and I, and I only say that, and people go, well, well, that's a bit harsh. You've got kids and you've got a lovely wife stuck by you, and I, and I have, but if you're on a plane. And the oxygen falls down. What do they say? Put it mm, on you yeah. first, and yeah, then yeah. put it on. You need to be well. Yeah. You need to be aware. And that—that's why. You know, if I went and had an argument with my wife today, you know, when I got home, we had an argument, and I steam out the house. You know, if I'm doing this for her, what's the first thing I'm going to do? Fuck it, I'm going out. I'm going to mm. have a drink. How dare you? Mm. You know, it, it's it's selfish. In a way, recovery is selfish. It, but in the other hand, people got to remember. You know, people will sit here and they'll go, oh, Paul's doing well five years, a couple of years without betting, you know. But you leave an hand grenade behind you. Okay. You ruin people's lives, you hurt people that you love, and they don't get as well as quickly as you do, if you understand that, you know, they don't have the tools that I have had to let go and to move on with my life. You know, sometimes that's not the same with my wife. Mm. Do you feel conflicted at all that you work for a company that has a lot of sponsors that are betting companies and things like that? Uh, no, I just don't work for the betting companies. Okay. I work for Sky. You okay. know, I work for Sky. I don't, you know, years ago, I was doing Sky Bet advert, adverts. Right. You know, I was. And, you know, but today I don't. Okay. You know, so yeah, I don't, I don't look at that, that situation. I mean, why should I chop my nose off to spite my face? Mm. You know, Sky don't ask me to do anything that's gambling related. Yeah. They don't ask me to do Soccer 6 or what, do Sky Bet. Yeah. You know, they're very understanding. They, they, they understand my addictions. They understand my illness. And, you know, I work for Sky. Um, you mentioned you wouldn't ban gambling, but would you want to see any changes made to the fact that it's, you know, obviously when you're watching football, there's, <laughs> there are ads all the time for betting companies and things along those lines. I think there should be more regulation on that I think if you're watching I think if you're watching a game on a live game and mm. I think at half time an advert comes on I think that's relevant okay I think it's irrelevant to, to what's happening I yeah. think you know people watching the game there's a lot more people that are not compulsive than are compulsive yeah. so you know my choice mm. turn the telly over we'll go and make a cup of coffee or a drink right. my choice do I think at eight o'clock in the morning, listening to the radio, sitting in the car, and a gambling advert comes on about talking about a game that's on at 7.45, 12 hours mm. later, do I think that's right? Absolutely not. They're okay. major triggers, major triggers. Okay. You know, you've got to remember people are going to work, they're on their own, you know, it's easy, you know, advert comes on. Oh yeah, the game tonight is Man United against Soundstone, Man United or Evens, you're like, Oh, mm. even Ooh, I, can, I can get out of trouble, you know. Yeah. And they're what you call triggers, okay. you know. And they're where that's when you get caught out, you know. I think sometimes it's too much, but there are times, you know. As I say, half time. It's a bit like social media, you know. People go on social media and they go, "Oh, sounds so having a go at me." Well, don't go on. Yeah, don't go yeah. on. You know, your choice. Yeah, if you go on. You got to take, you know. I I used to go on a lot, and people, you know, you get the odd two or three, the odd people that slaughter you, don't even know you, and you think, oh my god, that's not nice, and you know, and it would hurt me. It would. I'm not going to lie. I'm a human being. Yeah, yeah. So now, you know, I choose when to go on. Okay. I choose. You know, I go on. You know, and I, and I, I I do stuff on there, but you know, I try not to get involved anymore. 
you know, because mm. it, it, is, it is hurtful, you know, but people go on and they go, oh, it's really hurting. You know, and it's the same with a gambling. A gambling advert on the telly, switch the telly over. Yeah, okay. You can opt out of that. The news, yeah, it's the my, news stresses it's my you out, turn the news off sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, really, you shouldn't watch the news at 10 o'clock before you go to bed because everything on there is negative. So, yeah. you know, you shouldn't go to bed with a negative. Do you think that, like, athletes, Premier League footballers, there's more of a problem in that community with gambling than there is in... In other walks of life, or is it just more public because we can we know? Well, you, we you, sporting chance. I think the last time I heard sporting chance was seventy percent gambling, thirty percent drink. When right. it had always been seventy percent drink, thirty percent gambling. Wow. Okay. So, I yes. think that tells you everything. What do you think of when well, we've had some high-profile cases like Ivan Tony, for example, and Tanari? <coughs> and... Yeah, I don't. I think it dis- I, I think it's disgusting what they've done to them. Really, I think okay. it's disgusting at the highest level. I think this is an illness. It's an right. illness. You, you know, these people sit on the panel and they underestimate. It's an illness. Until something happens in their family, and then they'll understand. Do not ban people and take away their living. Take away what they do mm. to sit them indoors on their own for ten months to try and stop. Right. You know, you as you said just before. You know, Ivan Tony has a betting company on his shirt. Yeah, that he plays. You know, he would have done stuff for that company. I would, yeah. I'm sure he would have with his contract. I might be wrong. The biggest cl- player at the club, isn't he? So, yeah, <laughs> How yeah. dare And you ban him for 10 months. If they were on heroin, they would have been playing football now. Wow, yeah. Because they'd have gone into a treatment centre. They would have cleaned up. Mm. You know, they would have understood. They would have gone, oh, he's on drugs. Oh, you know, it's an addiction. You know, they underestimate gambling still. I think it's still a stigma. You know, yeah. people go, oh, stop gambling. You don't need to do it. Show a bit of willpower. Next time you get diarrhea, try and stop that with willpower. <laughs> you know, and it's the same with this. Yeah. You know that I had it with the with the, the drugs in '93, '94. I went into treatment. Mm. I come out. You know, they kept on drug testing me, and then they went right bang. You can play again now. Okay. You know, and it would have been the same if he was on crack cocaine or Tanoli was. They would have gone to a treatment centre. They would have cleaned up, and then they just kept on getting drug tested, and they would have turned up on the off chance. Why they're banning people? I just don't get this. You know, this right. not, it's not. You got to remember, Ivan Tony and Tanoli are probably on hundred grand a week. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're they're wealthy people. Yeah. You know, n- no disrespect here, but if you're playing for Rochdale Football Club now, and you, you know you're not on a lot of money, a lot of these players down in the lower divisions play for the love of the game. They probably get yeah. more money on a building site right. than what they would playing in them leagues. You know, the interest rates going through the roof. You know, their money's not going up. Yeah. You know, how am I going to get out of this? Yo, I've got to pay. I have a bet. I try and win the mortgage money or the rent money this month, get themselves in trouble. Mm. How can they possibly come out and say, I need help? I'm a compulsive gambler. My life's an absolute yeah. mess. How can I come out? Because what will happen, they'll get a 10 month ban. You don't think, you know, no disrespect to Rochdale, any league, any team in League One and Two. They're not going to stick by that player. Right. They're going okay. to get rid of them. Yeah. They're not going to pay their wages for the next 10 months. Mm. So it's not a good show. You know, they haven't put any thought into this. They should have gone, right, wait there a minute. You know, let's get them help. Let's go out into society, go get them talking, get them talking to people and opening up. And they haven't. And how's this going to help people in the lower leagues? You know, the, the people in the, you know, Ivan Tony's international, Tanoli's an international. It's a bad example. You're not going to, the clubs are not going to throw them away. They're 40, 50, 70, 80 million pound players. Mm. But in the lower leagues, how can they go out and ask for help? It hasn't been good. It's not good what they've done. Do you think there are probably many more players <coughs> we don't know about? That... Loads, 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 loads. Wow. Loads. Well, if 70% are in, that we, we wouldn't even know about. Yeah. You know, they've gone in. They've gone in on the chance probably... Their clubs have said they're injured and they're in there now and it's all top secret. Right, okay. But it's top secret. So, you know, these people, so they'll go and get well and they'll get help and great and fair play, but society ain't getting help. Yeah. You know, at least when I'm doing it, people go, well, if he can do it, I can do it. Mm. If it's happened to him, it can happen to me. You know, and people need to hear them stories. You know, that's how I, that's how I get well, by hearing stories from meetings. You know, that it's just not me. I'm not on my own. And that's what people need to hear because people think they're the only person that are doing what they're doing and they're not alone. But if it's all top secret, how are they going to get well? 
there are obviously cases where footballers, for example, are betting on football <coughs> and someone who perhaps doesn't understand gambling addicts well think, well, if you don't want to get caught, bet on other things, you're mm. far less likely to. Wh- why the bet on football? Do you have any idea? Is it, is it almost a cry for help? Do they want to get caught in some circumstances? Impulsive gambler. Just goes out the window. Rationale goes right. out the window. Okay. You, know, you know, when you plug a plug in, <coughs> it works. If that plug's off in, half out, ain't working. And that's what happens with an addict. Yeah. You know, don't rationale. You don't sit there and go, yeah, oh yeah, I better mm. not do it. I won't do that because I'm doing that. They just lost their money. What's the next thing to bet on? Mm. You know, and, and it's an addiction. It's, you know, you don't, <coughs> you don't think, you don't go, I'll wait there a minute, I'll stop. You're in You're in it and it just nothing, you care about nothing. Okay. Um, in terms of your story, do you think, or maybe you don't think this far ahead, do you think it? you live the rest of your life now as you are sober, not gambling, or do you think there will be a time where <coughs> you fall victim to it? I won't today. Okay. I won't today. And that's how it should be seen. And, that, and I think everybody, I think everybody, you know, it doesn't matter if you get up and you're the richest man in the world or the poorest kid in the world or, or person, you only get today. Mm. We, only get to, we only get today. Mm. We don't get anything else. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So, you know, that's the, one of the big advantages. I've, I've been very fortunate. I wouldn't wish addiction on anyone, but my addiction's been fortunate enough to learn me to live in the day and 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 understand sort of understand life really and understand that that's all we get and don't look too far forward and never look back what's the point in looking back wow what for yeah okay um so about a month ago i spoke to um matt Letizier. we had him here and had a, had a good conversation with him he had things to say obviously about being sacked from sky i believe you've worked for sky almost the same amount of time as, as he did 17 18 years something like yeah that. i'm about 16 and a half years now 16 and a half years. do you think it was right for him to to be sacked you know what? I'm good friends with Matt. Mm. Good friends. We get on really well. <coughs> Got on really well there. We, we even had uh, dinner together the other day. Uh, he got warnings. Okay. Got warnings. You know, sometimes, yeah. you know, I said to him when, when he when he did get the sack, he rung me up and said to me and he said the reasons. I just said, sometimes you're not always clever to be clever. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm not the brightest but I'm bright on certain things. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that that was probably the reason. Yeah. Yeah. I, he he knows why. Okay. And I think he said to me he had about six warnings. I mean, mm-hmm. so. Yeah. But yeah. I I, I'm, I I I love to. He's a top bloke. Good to be round. He's a top bloke. But yeah. Yeah. It's as I say. It's not always clever to be clever. Mm. And sometimes. I don't want this to sound horrible, but. Sometimes common sense is not common. Okay. It's not always common. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I I keep my head down. Sometimes it's a bit of an advantage not being the brightest kid in the world because <laughs> I haven't got them long words. <laughs> I see people on the internet and they're losing these words and I look at them and then they could use a completely smaller word and they don't. Okay. You know, that's I think that's where my advantage is. I think I'm more streetwise mm-hmm. in that kind of way. Okay. And... Obviously, you know, from what you said, really enjoy the work that you do on Sky. Why do you think that's gone so well when you've had that longevity? Because obviously people in, in that situation, they don't often usually stick around for that long. I love it. One, I love it. I, I think I, I'm honest. Hmm. Half the people, you know, the other thing addictions taught me as well and being in recovery, half the people in the world will love you and half the people in the world will hate you. Okay. And they don't even know you. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? I would sat on my arm. Don't judge me until you've walked a mile in my shoes. Mm. You know, I, I yeah, I've met Robbie Savage about three or four times. Lovely bloke, yeah. and I mean, love, really nice bloke. You know, not best mate or anything, but I've just been in his company three yeah, or four yeah. times, and I've been really impressed how nice he was. Everybody I meet go, oh, that Robbie Savage is a bit of a sound so sound so, and I right. go. Oh, when did you meet him? I go, <laughs> I haven't met him. And that just sums it up for me. Yeah. Do not judge anybody until you've walked a mile in their shoes. And and that's one thing that it's taught me, you know. But I used to, when I was drinking and gambling, I always needed everybody to love me. Okay. You know, I go on the internet and, you know, Instagram yeah. and what it's called now, X, and, and someone would go, oh, you're this, you're that. And I'll be like, wow. But the other, like, 
<laughs> 7,000 tweets. Of, <laughs> like, oh, my God, what yeah. amazing man. You're doing great. Fair play to you. Love you, this and that. But that one person... Why? Why don't you like me? <laughs> but I like. I don't now. I mean, it's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. You know, some people like you, some people don't like you. But I, I don't dislike anybody. I'm, I'm not one of them people. Who was a better player, you or Matt Letizia? Different players. I played at a different, different level. Mm. If I'm being honest, you know, I played at a club. Yeah. There's levels, you know. <clears throat> you know, but Tiz was very, very talented. Very talented footballer. I'd love to have seen him play for one of the big four. Mm. I think then. You know, we always used to have this argument that he should have, you know, he should have, should have played for England more times. Yeah. It's hard to play for England if you're not playing at yeah. the top clubs. You know, week in, week out, severe pressure, severe pressure. You know, Fulham lose to Chelsea. Yeah. Nothing happens. If Chelsea lose to Fulham, it's headline news. Mm. Headline news. And that's what you're playing up against. You know, you play at Arsenal, you lose three games, you play three bad games, you're out the team. You might not get back in for three months. Yeah, you know, you go to a lesser club, you can have ten of the worst games you've ever had, but you know you plan next week. So you can play a different kind of football. You yeah, can flick balls around the corner. You can do what you want. So yeah, but no, a talent got um, some unbelievable goals, and and, and a, the most important thing, a nice man. Mm. Tis, you know, I always got time for Tis. Mm. I mean, it sounds like you think potentially he was a bit underrated. Do you think you were underrated as a player? No. Okay. No. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I think people talk quite, uh, yeah. You know, when I talk to people, you know, people, yeah, I don't, I never got that thing. I've never, you know, I don't sit here now and think, oh my God, I should really get a bit more recognition than what I did. No, I don't. No, I don't. No, mm -hmm. I think, I think people appreciate what I used to, what, especially the players that I, you know, yeah. the players I played with and, and the clubs I played for the fans. I think th there's where your answer is. Yeah. You know, people will watch me week in, week out. You know, if you went to Arsenal, you went to Villa, Portsmouth and Middlesbrough, I, I'd find it hard for fans to turn around. I don't think you get too many fans to go, well, he was overrated. Mm. At Walsall, yeah, maybe. I was coming towards the end of my career and I had a bit of a stinker. Yeah. But yeah, so no, I don't, I don't think I was under, I don't think I was underestimated. Um, you mentioned about Middlesbrough and I wanted to, Ask about that. Is it true that you moved because they were going to pay you more and that was going to help with your, yeah, your gambling? Yeah, my addiction. Yeah, yeah. my addiction it took me took took took. Uh, that was the decision at the time. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I liked it at the time. There, when I after a while, I loved it. The people were great, but yeah, yeah, I just couldn't get my head around that I would be earning thirty two thousand pound a week a month extra. I just couldn't get my head around that. Mm. You know, especially as a gambler, you know. Yeah. But looking back now, if it was today, you know, I know, I know, money doesn't. It helps, but it doesn't make you happy, happy. And the big worry is when you got money. If you've got money, and you want to kill yourself, that's a major worry. Right. Okay. I think more so than if you got no money. Oh, interesting. Because if you got no money, you've always got that thought: if I had money, life would be different. Ah, uh, okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, when yeah. you had, when you got the money, you can do whatever you want, and you want to kill yourself. You don't see too much way out. You're thinking, well, where's there to go? Because yeah, <clears throat> there's nothing else. So that's where people don't understand. It is an inside, inside. You know, you you, you got to work on you, not how much money you got. Fab. Okay, so a bit of a fun one. Um, if you had to build your ultimate five-a-side team. Players past or present, who would you uh, who would you put in it? Oh, uh, I'll go Edison. In goal, yeah. And I say that, I never play with Edison, but if you're playing five a side, he's like another player on the pitch. So yeah. you're making it six a side straight away. Big advantage. Uh, my defender would probably be Paolo Maldini. Mm. who was an unbelievable defender, the best I ever played against. Mm. Uh, then I would have Gaza, Jack Grealish. Okay. Tight pitches, dribble past people. So four. So I've got one more player. Yeah. One more player. One more player, centre forward, need to score goals, need to score goals. I'll go because he's small. I'll go Ian Wright. I played with Ian Wright. Ian Wright was amazing. And 
I know even if it was five a side, he'll take it as serious if it was the, the FA Cup final. Right, yeah, yeah. A lot of footballers are like that, <laughs> and they take things as serious as... Uh, I've, never, I've, not, I've never seen Ian Wright, you know, his enthusiasm when he comes to Arsenal was through the roof, you know. I think he dragged a lot of people along. You know, he'd, he'd score a goal in training and he'd celebrate it like he'd just scored against Tottenham at <laughs> Ivory. So, yeah. You see that when he's on the TV. I, I almost love watching the England games whenever he's one of the pundits. Yeah. He, he gets you more into oh, it. Oh, yeah. When he's, he you can see by his enthusiasm, yeah. He loves it. So, yeah, I, I've got, you know, when I get home, I'll pick that team again and none of them will get in. <laughs> but yeah, off the cuff there. Yeah, nice. Um, oh, speaking of England, how, how do you think England are going to do in the Euros? Oh, well, win the Euros. You think so? Yeah, definitely. Even with Gareth Southgate, because some people are thinking uh, he might not be the, the best choice? I don't, I, don't, I don't know why people say that, because okay. I, I don't know why who else would get. I mean, in my lifetime, I didn't think I'd see us win a tournament. Right. Now, every tournament we go to, I expect us to win it. So Gareth, Gareth's very good. People got to under, be careful what you wish for. You know, you, you take Gareth out of there. The, fa the players love Gareth. They love him. Everybody yeah. turns up for the squads. Every, you know, everybody's together. You know, we can look back, you know, penalty against Harry Kane. You know, you'd always expect him to score a penalty. Yeah. The only one we, everybody will probably judge him on was, was Euros Italy. 1-0 yeah. up, had Italy on the racks. Then I think his defensive mode of playing in defence, probably all his career kicked in. And he probably looks back now and probably thinks we should have gone for the for the juggler. If we score again, we win the Euros. Yeah. The worst thing that can happen, it can go one all. But that's experience. I think we win it. I don't see any squad like ours. I don't see a lot of players from other teams getting in our team. Mm. And, and, and I'd, I'd be shocked if we didn't win it. I'd be shocked. Yeah. Well, that'd be really exciting. Right? Yeah, I, 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 I hope, would be shocked. I hope, I hope but, you're right. But, you, you know, it, it, it's in June. There's a long way to go. There's injuries. We always seem to have an injury, don't we, to a top player at a tournament. So hopefully the players stay fit. Keep Bellingham fit, keep Kane fit. And, yeah. Well, you got two, you just named two of the best players in the world in their position. So, yeah. you know, we have that, you know. Yeah. Um, going to, to the Premier League, who, uh, who do you think is going to win it this year? Uh, I've changed my mind about 63 times so far. We're only in about 20 weeks in, or 20 match days. Uh, I was bullish on Man City at the start because I know what they're like. Their squad's amazing. Mm. Then I went for Arsenal. I thought, you know what? And then Arsenal lost two games. I still think Arsenal are in it. Yeah. I still think, yeah, 100%. I really do still think Arsenal. Everybody has a blip during the season. You know, the problem... They've had their little blip, you know, losing them two games. But if you look at Man City, you know, you get Kevin De Bruyne back. They're going to get Harlem back. They've got two hundred million pound players coming back that they don't even have to pay for, you know. And I watched them yesterday, and Kevin De Bruyne come on. Well, I watched them against Newcastle the other day. Yeah. And when when he come on, it was it was like an it was like a. A twenty-year-old playing in an under twelves league. Yeah, he yeah, was just yeah. head and shoulders above every. It was, yeah. it was extraordinary what he, you know, what he was like. So, this Man City team reminds me of the Liverpool team when I used to play. If you finish above Man City and don't win the league, you're bang out of luck. So I'll go Man City. Okay. Do you think whilst Arteta is manager of Arsenal, he will win the Premier League? If it, even if it's not this season, I think it's about. It's about. Uh, moments about timings I think timing is very important you know football you know you're coming up against the best team ever to play football in Man City yeah we're probably one of the best coaches of all time you know they've got 60 70 million pound players in every position mm. twice over you know it's, it's a bit like boxing you know if you if you're a heavyweight champion of the world if you're, you're heavyweight coming through and Mike Tyson's the world champion world title you're not going to win it, are you? Do you yeah. know what I mean? And it's but if Mike Tyson weren't around at that time, that that person might have won it, might have held the title for ten years. So it's it's all about timings. I'm not sure. I think he, he's starting to get a little bit like Arsene Wenger at the moment. Okay, you know that little bit of stubbornness. Right. You know, like yeah, okay. you know at the end with Arsene, and Arsene was amazing manager. You know, ahead of his time. But at the end, you know, everybody knew Arsenal needed a centre half. Yeah, but they never get a centre half. 
you know, everybody knows Arsenal need a centre forward. Mm. You know, he just lost two games on the trot. He gets to the January market and they still not bought anybody. Mm. And you're like, but we all know and everybody knows you need a centre forward to win the Premier League. You're missing chances left, right and centre and they haven't got one. Yeah. And that's my problem. When you say stubborn, are we talking Kai Havertz here? I like Kai Havertz. Okay. I'm a big Kai Havertz fan. I'm a Chelsea fan. So, I, you know, Kai Havertz won the Champions League. Yeah. So. But I like him. I think he's a good footballer. Y- you know, you can't just put him up front for one game against Liverpool and then go, right, go and get me a hat trick. Yeah. You've got to give him a run up there. I, I don't think he's a, a in a midfield free. You know, I don't think he's one of them players. So for me, I think he has to play up front, but you've got to give him six or seven games. Problem is, I don't think he wins you the Premier League. I don't think Jesus wins you the Premier League. And I don't think Nketiah wins you the Premier League. And I don't think putting all three of them together will score more goals than Salah does, who plays on the right wing. Yeah. So that tells you you need a centre forward. Right, Okay. Yeah. Um, Moving to some some other managers. I'd be curious to know if you think they will last the end of the season. Uh, Start with Pochettino. Yes. You think he will? 100%. Okay. Yeah, there's a project there. I don't think you bring in 20-odd players and then just think they're just all going to gel together. I think mm. if Chelsea end up winning a, li- a cup and finishing six in the league, I think it'll be half-decent season. I think it'll be a decent season for Arsenal when, well, for Chelsea when it might end up that Arsenal finish, who knows, fourth in the league and not win a trophy. Yeah. So, you know, but the, the game's changed. That would be more successful than Chelsea. Yeah. Cause, which... It's mind blowing, really, isn't it? You know <laughs> that I tell you that Chelsea finish six, get into Europe, but win a trophy. But Arsenal get in the top four, so they're more successful than Chelsea are. And that's sometimes where the game's gone now. It's not about medals; it's about money. Do you, I look at the Chelsea project of what's happened, and, and it sort of seems to me that they're either going to be bankrupt or the best team in the world in three years' time. Do you think it's is that dramatic? I think both time. I think I think, but I think you're a million miles off on both. <laughs> right. Okay. I think a million miles off on both. <laughs> okay. I don't think they'll be the best team in three years, and I don't think they'll go right. bankrupt. I think I think they're clever enough to know these people. Okay. I don't think you get billionaires at these clubs like this and come in and. Get it that wrong. Right, okay. In finite, in finances. Yeah. In player-wise, they can, because yeah. they don't really know a lot about football. You know, they've brought a lot of players to dominate football in four or five years' time when mm. we all know football's football's a funny game. You know, you have your moments. You, you know, you could be the best, best, in, best in the Premier League one year mm. and the next year you're gone. Mm. You know, so I don't see how you can keep on bringing young players in and go, right, put them on seven year contracts and be the best player. You know, I I don't I don't understand that. So I I think Chelsea will get better and steadily, but I still think their players short, believe it or not, when they already got yeah. 30 players, I think. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, so that's Chelsea, that's Pochettino. How about Ten Hag? Oh. Do well to keep his job before this podcast goes out, wouldn't he? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh it beats me. They've lost nearly half the amount of games they've played this season. I mean, that's. F- I mean, I think if if Luton done that, I think Rob, Rob Edwards, who's done an amazing job, and they're not expected to win any game, you'd yeah. be under pressure. So, I'm not sure. I'm, I, the only problem is what managers are about. Okay. Yeah. You know that's you know it's all right saying right get rid of Ten Hag. Who are you bringing in? Mm. You're bringing Angelotti for a year. Yeah. Steady the ship. You know. I think he's fortunate. I, I do think he's fortunate because I look at his time there and I don't see too many players that he's made them much better footballers. Mm. Like, I don't look at him and go, wow, he's an amazing player now or he's an amazing player. I'd look at Arsenal and I think yeah. Arteta's improved footballers, improved the players. I don't see that with Man United and that's my big worry with Man United. Or they might have one good season and then they go missing the next season. And that's that's... That's where I, I would judge him. You know, he is the manager of the biggest club in the world, in my opinion. Mm. Eddie Howe? Should. Okay. Should. Yeah. Should keep his job. Yeah. But sooner or later, the, the, these people will put money in. You know, I heard the owners, when they lost in the final of the League Cup last year, we're going to win the league, we're going to win the Champions League, we're going to do this. 
He has been unlucky with his team with injuries. Mm. But they have had players back and it ain't been as bad recently. I watched them at Chelsea in the Cup and I know Chelsea scored last kick of the game and went on and won on penalties, but it wasn't good. And then mm. yesterday you looked and I know they were 2-1 up. You know, how many players were missing yesterday? You know, you could yeah. say Wilson was missing, but Isaac and Wilson don't play at the same time. Yeah. You know, I think they missed Joel Linton. I think they're mm. a bit weak in midfield when Joel Linton don't play. But by that, you look and you're like... And Man City literally destroyed him, didn't they? I mean, in a, you know, getting up to 700 passes. Total possession. I hope he stays. I've, I've seen him work. I've been to Bournemouth when he worked. He's a good manager. So I hope he does. But they, they, they want to they wanna start moving quickly. I think that he done it too well. I think they got into mm. the top four too quickly. I didn't see him getting in the top four this season, if I'm being honest. Okay, almost a victim of his own success. It does, and you know what it's like. You've got to get in again, and now all of a sudden it's three or four steps back. Yeah, okay. Um, who do you think is going to win the next Ballon d'Or? Oh, good question. See, Ireland's injured now. You know, I'm not a great fan of this. This Ballon d'Or. I, okay. I, think, I just think it's timings. Right. I think it's timings. You know what I mean? It's like, people aren't assessing the whole year or season. Yeah, just doing it's just a like bit. that little bit or people forget what people have done at the start of the season. Yeah. You know, if you if, if you have a great start of the year or a great start of the season mm. and you're not great at the end, but the person at the end... You know, there's a saying in football, you know, if you play well the last 20 minutes of games, yeah. fans walk away from the ground and think, he was good, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. Because you only remember the last 20 minutes. Who remembers the first 35 minutes of a football match? Yeah. And it's a bit like these. It's mm. like the PFA player, of the, you know, the PFA team of the year or the player of the year in the PFA. You know, you get your form and you go, who's doing well? Oh, he's doing well. You know, I, I, I go... See, it's a bit... It's, it's, it's an awkward one because... If Harry Kane goes and wins the Champions League for Bayern Munich and wins the Euros, he's won it. Yeah. Simple. He's won it. Even if he doesn't score a goal, really. Yeah. But he's involved. He's going to win it. So it's... I don't... You know, I don't see PSG 100% not winning the Champions League. But if they went and won the Euros, because it's in Pape, yeah, he'll win it. Yeah. So, you know, I, 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 I'd, I'd probably say Harry Kane because I think we'll win the Euros or it might be a Bellingham. But Bellingham... When was the last time Bellingham scored at Real Madrid? Hmm. You, you know I think it's three or four or five games now and if he went another five games you wouldn't be shocked because he's not a goal scorer you know yeah. he's not an out and out attacking he's not a Frank Lampard so you know if it was three weeks ago he would probably have a chance so hmm. it's about timings but I'll go with Harry Kane because I, I really bullish about us winning the Euros Okay You mentioned Bellingham there and um, I asked uh, Jamie O'Hara about, about that recently and he said he thinks Bellingham will go on to be England's best ever player. Do you think he's that good? He's good. Very good. He's ahead of his time. Mm. You know, he reminds me of... Uh, I was talking to Jamie Redknapp the other week with chat and he, it's true what he said. It's like he's, he's a bit like weird science. You know, when right. the two kids put the woman together and make okay. her the best. If you're going to put a footballer together, yeah. that's what you would put together. You know, his size, he's mm. athletic, he's got good feet, he's quick, he can score a goal got to do it for longevity mm. got to do it for how long Wayne Rooney done it for people like that you, you know that's going to be the hardest mm. that's the hardest thing he's, he's only 20 I don't know the lad but I like the lad mm. he looks level headed I like his parents I hear the stories about when he left Birmingham you know they wasn't interested in the money they just wanted him to play football Yeah, and he goes to Dortmund and they go he will play Yeah. everywhere else they went they went well we're not sure. Mm. Okay, bye. He wanted to play. So I like that. I hope, I hope, but it's hard. Mm. So, you know, if you'd have said, if you if we'd have sat down here last year, we'd be saying Rashford could be one of the best players yeah. to play for England of all time. But today as we sit here, you'll be like, really? Mm. You know, so it's a long time over the next 10 years. The lad's going to get targeted. He's going to be started to pick up like he's in, in Madrid now. I, I'm not sure how many goals he scored in the last four or five games. I don't think it's a lot, if any. Yeah. So people are going to stop him playing. Now he's got to come up with other solutions. 
And that's hard at 20. Mm. At 26, 27, it becomes easier because you've been in the game a lot longer. So I think if he, if he keeps on working at his game, he will. But as I said, at the end of last season, if we'd have said, oh, Rashford could be one of the greatest players to play for England this year, we, we wouldn't say that. No. But my dad's a Man United fan and I think he gets frustrated with Marcus Rashford more than any other player. Yeah. And what do, what do you think of him? He seems to go on these runs of just being a world beater and then just completely falls apart in other times. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I, I think... I don't, I don't know the lad, but he seems a confidence player. <laughs> You know, there's one thing in football, you know, what I learned all through my career. If there's one thing you could bottle up as a footballer's confidence, it's a massive thing. And I know people might sit, you know, fans might sit there and go, wow, you know, confident you're getting 200 grand a week. You know, why should you be confident and go out and play? You know, some people struggle with it. Some people go through bursts. He gets six in six and then he can go seven or eight games without scoring. Again, he gets doubled up. Mm. Now he's got to come up with solutions. You know, it becomes, it's simple when you, you get the ball on the left and you've only got the right back to beat and you can get it in, cut inside, bend it in the corner or, you know, he shows you down the line, you cross it. Now, all of a sudden, they're getting two players up against him. If he cuts inside, the defender's waiting for him, the centre mm. half. Now he's got to be bright and clever enough to, to make, make that solution. That's where I look at the Ten Hag situation. I think, well, they haven't come up with anything yet. Mm. They haven't come up with anything. You know, not like Hoyland comes across and might play a one-two and just to get them thinking again, the defenders. So, but he'll always play. He's, he's got a reputation. He's all, he'll always play. He's, you know, he's a threat. He's a threat. Do I play him in front of Grealish or Reed or Foden? I'm not sure. Okay. Especially in games where England have earned the right now for teams to sit 10 behind the ball. Yeah, yeah. So we need them little one-twos and not that power and pace. It'll be interesting, but Gareth likes him. You know, he's always going to be in the squad. You know, after this podcast, he could get 10 in 10. Yeah. And, I, you know, I wouldn't be shocked and nor would you be shocked. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for coming to speak to me. Really, Pleasure, really appreciate yeah. it. Pleasure. Obviously, everyone knows you on Sky, but is there anywhere you'd like to send people otherwise? Social media or maybe there are addicts listening watching you say this is what you should do this is where you should go I, I, I think if, seek help you yeah. know if you, whatever addiction whether it be GA CA or, or AA you know remember you're an ill person who needs to get well you're not a bad person trying to get good you're an ill per. you're a good person who, but you're an ill person mm -hmm. and uh, you know I, I wish him, anybody who seeks help all the best uh, well I think what you've said being so open is certainly going to help people so good uh, so thank you very much. Thank you, Ben. I want to say a big thank you to Paul for coming on the show and being so open, particularly about his addictions. There's lots of things that I learned that I didn't previously know. Have you been affected by addictions, perhaps suffered with an addiction yourself? What have you done to cope with it? What did you learn in this interview that perhaps you didn't know before? Let me know in the comments below. So make sure to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. And if you want to watch my full exclusive interview with Premier League legend Matt Letizia, you can do so right here.